okay very good very good morning our and all so today we can start the fourth chapter so this is completely related to the concept of information and uh, the source coding techniques so i think you know that in uh, digital communication that uh, elements encoder plays a major role so we have two different types of encoding techniques what is source encoding and second one is channel encoding source encoding is uh, used to represent the uh, the data into a code format okay that that uh, code format depends on the particular manufacturer okay the particular type of uh, code representation is in the hands of the designer and our channel encoding technique so once this code for code data is uh, applied to the channel Uh, this uh, this may get uh, disturbed okay this may get affected and uh, so that uh, errors will get updated so to overcome that problem encoding tactic okay encoded data is once again fed to the channel encoder uh, to identify any kind of uh, bit error or bit that can be detected and corrected by using the channel encoding uh, channel encoder and channel decoder process okay that channel encoding uh, techniques we will study in the fifth chapter and in the fourth chapter we will study different uh, like the concepts of information and the, the source coding techniques so if you if you see the contents here in the fourth chapter part a it is uh, split into two parts one is the information theory and the other is source encoding so in the information theory Uh, we will discuss the concept of information and its properties similarly we will discuss the average information which is nothing but the entropy and its properties so module 1 is the concept of information and its properties and module 2 represents the average information which is nothing but the entropy okay and uh, and its properties similarly uh, you can see here that third module we'll discuss the information rate and we'll solve some of the problems related to entropy and information rate in the module 4 and in uh, module 3 and in module 4 we'll discuss the concept of mutual information and its properties because once the uh, like uh, transmitter sends the data our receiver should be able to capture the data properly so that's why mutual uh, information plays a key role because a transmitted data should be properly received so that's why here mutual information plays a key role so that's why you should learn some of the properties of mutual information and all these are the contents of uh, information theory and coming to the part b here we have source encoding so generally we will have two kinds of source encoding techniques one is shannon fano coding method and the second one is huffman coding so this shannon fano coding method and huffman coding are the two types of source encoding techniques here we'll calculate the efficiency for both the techniques and then the capacity of uh, uh, like various uh, discrete and analog channels we'll study and uh, uh, gaussian channel we'll study here okay the analog channel uh, the best example is gaussian channel so capacity of gaussian channel will also be evaluated uh, this capacity of gaussian channel is uh, generally stated by shannon hartley it is defined by shannon hartley so it is called as shannon hartley theorem that will like uh, prove in the case of fourth chapter part b and uh, later we'll undergo the bandwidth snr trade off by using shannon hartley theorem let us move to the introduction of the part a for the fourth chapter so that is uh, the introduction to information theory and we will discuss the properties of information this is the module 1 of chapter 4 part a okay so here in this we you can be able to learn the concept of discrete processes information theory and its properties okay 
so actually the this is like theory but uh, actually if you do all the information so that's why i have mentioned here so what is a information theory it is like a branch of probability that deals with quantification storage and transfer of information here we are telling that information theory is a branch of probability why we are uh, saying the word probability because uh, whatever the data uploaded at the transmitter section so it, do, it like the same information may or may not reach the destination so at the receiver section sometimes you can you may capture the information or you may that's like completely an anticipation that's our expectation expecting the best result okay that expectation can be updated by the brand. it's a, like a probability condition where you can directly assess completely give the perfect value may or may not okay that expected value you can evaluate by using probability so that's why we send you that information theory is a branch of probability that deals with quantification storage and transfer of information so what first we'll express the signal we'll express the signal in one particular uh, uh, quantified version and then the data is stored and it is transferred to the uh, via channel towards the destination so these are the three steps used to which uh, which uh, like which will uh, our information theory uh, comprise of our information theory is a branch of probability that will deals with three factors one is quantification second one is storage and third is transfer of information and we are transmitting the data so that may be continuous or discrete component so like some of the examples of continuous uh, signals are like temperature time length of the film like these are some of the examples of continuous factors uh, like in the, uh, previously we said you that if you uh, want to take the continuous example we consider it as a sinusoidal signal because its amplitude continuously differs with respect to time it is not a fixed value for a particular time interval it's not like discrete it's like a continuous variable so that's why this time temperature these are all the continuous factors and here you are and i told you that in the third chapter part p a certain number of bits are grouped per symbol okay and these symbols are formatted and transferred via the antenna okay so some of the examples of discrete symbols uh, will represent the symbol uh, will represent the our uh, data in the form of symbols so bits are represented in the form of symbols and a group of symbols are transmitted so the transmitted sequence so the thing that in the third point i said you that the transmitted sequence is a combination of symbols it is a combination of symbols and each symbol and each symbol uh, once again comprise of certain number of bits and how many number of bits are present in symbol that depends on the type of the transmission technique okay so the thing that you should know here from the third point is that the sequence is a combination of symbols the sequence is a combination of symbols and each symbol comprise of certain number of bits based on the type of transmission technique and here the information is always additive in some sense so here we are assuming the information to be additive in nature so information sources are classified into two types one is discrete memoryless source and a memory source here everything we are defining is a discrete memoryless source because the present date present uh, discrete information doesn't rely on the past data so it is completely memory less source uh, so this is represented with a short form dms discrete memory less source and uh, second one is memory source second one is memory source okay here Uh, the output the present data depends on the past information 
this is like the sequential soaps where the present data depends on past information. But in the case of discrete memoryless source, the present information depends on, doesn't depend on the past data. And here we can say that the whole, like this information theory relies on discrete memoryless source. Okay, major factors, we don't, we don't have a relationship between the present data and past information. So as in the case of pulse distal modulation techniques, in pulse distal modulation techniques, we have used a prediction filter in the feedback section, which will store the past information. But here, uh, this discrete memoryless source, this discrete memoryless source doesn't have uh, any information regarding the past data. And the one more point is this DMS, that is discrete memoryless source can be characterized by the list of symbols, the probability assigned to these symbols, and the rate of generating the symbols by the source. So how you can uh, like characterize the DMS? You should know the list of symbols. So how many symbols are there in a particular sequence? That you should know first. And what is the probability of a particular symbol that the upcoming symbol is S1 only. It's particular symbol. So you should know the probability of assigned to these symbols. That is the sequence you should know. So until and unless you don't know the uh, what is the next upcoming symbol. Okay, you cannot uh, like uh, reconstruct our information. And third factor is the rate of generating the symbols by the source. That is nothing but the symbol rate number of symbols transmitted per second. So these three factors will characterize our discrete memory less source. So symbols, how many symbols are the list of symbols you should know and the probability of uh, assigned to these symbols. What is the probability? How many times this symbol S1 will repeat? How many times S2 will repeat? Every time we can't expect that S1 will follow S2, S2 will follow S3. It's followed by S4. Okay. So the probability assigned to these symbols should also be a node factor. The third one is symbol rate. How many number of symbols are transmitted per second? Okay, three symbols are transmitted per second. These three are S1, S2, S3. That is the order that you should know. So a discrete memoryless source is generally characterized by these three factors. List of symbols, probability assigned to these symbols. And third one is a rate of generating the symbols by the source. Now here, if you can, you can observe this slide. In DMS, that is a discrete memoryless source, the information, these two points are very important. So if you know these two factors, we can easily solve the, uh, define the entropy, mutual information, everything, it will be easy for you. In discrete memoryless source, please observe the first point. The information content of an event, E, is proportional to the uncertainty is proportional to uncertainty of the event and inversely proportional to its probability and inversely proportional to its probability. So you can uh, read this statement once again. Uh, if you see the example, it will be more clear. See the example, sun rises in the east. Sun rises in the east. I think it is a general statement that everyone know. I think all of the students know that Sun rises in the east and sun sets in the west. So that is a general statement. But what is the probability of that statement? Almost all 99 percentage, uh, like one, one country or two country, like minimum probability sun, may, sun may rise in the east. Sorry, sun may rise in the west. But every time sun rises in the east, because that is a daily uh, routine statement with more probability. But is there any information? If you say this statement, will anyone listen to you? No, because that is a general fact. Sun rises in the east only and sun sets in the west. But if I said you that in one particular country, sun rises in the west, then what you will do? You will listen carefully because there is some information in that. A statement with less probability will have more information 
and a statement with more probability will have less information. One more funny thing I will tell you. So whenever like a, a dog bite a man, is it a general statement? Yes. So whenever I tell you a dog bite a man, it is a routine statement. Every time that is the nature of a dog. So like most times it will bite a man. But in other sense, so that statement will have less information. But in other sense, whenever I say that a man bite a dog. So this will have this is a statement with less probability. So until and unless the person is mad, uh, he cannot bite the dog. So that is a statement with less probability. So you will have more information in that. So we'll uh, like focus more on the particular statement. So what is the conclusion here? A conclusion is that the information content of a particular event is proportional to its uncertainty. So the less it exists. So it is the less it certain if it does not happen, there is more information in that. And it is inversely proportional to its probability. So the more the probability less information is present in that and the statement with less probability will have more information. So what is the conclusion from the first statement? The information content of a particular event is proportional to its uncertainty is proportional to its. Is proportional to the uncertainty of the event and inversely proportional to its probability and inversely proportional to its probability. Please remember this statement I of E. What is I of E? I of E is the information content of the event E. It is proportional to 1 by P of E, where P of E represents the probability of the event E. What is P of E? The probability of the event E. So information content I of E is proportional to 1 by P of E. Or you can also say that I of E is inversely proportional to P of E. I of E is inversely proportional to P of E. So please remember this first statement. I of E is inversely proportional to P of E or directly proportional to 1 by P of E. Now let us move to the second statement. What is the second statement? Total information, total information is the sum of all independent outcomes, all independent outcomes. Now let us assume. So please remember this equation, uh, this statement. For a discrete memoryless source, uh, like two uh, possibilities of statements are there. One is information content is inversely proportional to its event probability P of E. And second thing is Total information is a sum of all independent outcomes is the sum of all independent outcomes. Let us assume X suffix J where J ranges from 1 to M is one particular event. Having certain outcomes that range from 1 to M capital M number of outcomes are there and YK. What is YK? It is a second event. So we are assuming two independent events. One is XJ where J ranges from capital M number of outcomes and the second one is YK. This is a second event where K ranges from 1 to N number of outcomes are there for the two particular events and we are telling that these two events are independent to each other. OK, let us move to the next slide to discuss more about the second statement. So total information is a sum of all independent outcomes. I said to you, so two events we assumed. What are the two events XJ and YK? What are the two events XJ and YK where J ranges from 1 to M and for YK event K ranges from 1 to N. This many number of outcomes are there for the two independent events. Now. Uh, based on the first statement, already we defined the first statement. What is the first statement? 
information of the particular event. What is the event here? Let us discuss the first event. What is the first event? Xj. So I of Xj, I of Xj is proportional to 1 by P of Xj. 1 by P of Xj. So why, how you got this uh, relationship? From the first statement, the more the probability will have less information and less the probability will have more information. So that's why you can represent I of Xj as inversely proportional to P of Xj. And similarly, for the event Yk, I of Yk you can write as proportional to 1 by P of Yk. 1 by uh, the proportional to 1 by represents the inverse proportionality. So I of Xj is inversely proportional to P of Xj and I of Yk is inversely proportional to P of Yk. Now, in the statement, uh, these are independent events. Okay, these two events are independent to each other. Now let the total information content, let the total information content present in the two events be I of Xj comma Yk. I of Xj comma Yk. What is I of Xj comma Yk? Total information due to Xj and Yk events. So individual events are I of in, individual information is I of Xj and I of Yk. What is the total information? I of Xj comma Yk. Now when the two events are independent to each other. So actually these two events are independent to each other. Then the total probability. Then the total probability due to the two events that is P of Xj comma Yk. So total probability due to the two events xj comma yk. Total probability due to the events xj and yk will be the product of product of prob individual probabilities product of their individual event probabilities. OK. So P of Xj comma Yk will be P of Xj into P of Yk because these two events are independent to each other. So wherever the two events are independent to each other, total probability will be the product of individual event probabilities. Now remember that equation. Then what is I of Xj comma Yk? Total information content. So total information content so from the first statement you can write like total information content is proportional to a reciprocal of its total probability. What is total probability of the two events P of Xj comma Yk? So I of Xj comma Yk is inversely proportional to its total probability. Total probability is P of Xj comma Yk. Now this total probability is the product of is the product of individual event probabilities when the two events are independent to each other. So that's why you can replace P of Xj comma Yk as P of Xj into Yk. So upon splitting that you will get 1 by P of Xj into 1 by P of Yk. So now what is the total uh, information due to the two independent events? It is proportional to product of 1 by P of Xj and 1 by P of Yk. OK, please remember these equations. We can move to the next slide. So what is the total information? But we told from the second uh, statement that total information is the sum of information content due to the first event and information content due to the second event. So total information is the sum of information content due to the first event and information content due to the second event. Then what is I of Xj? Total information due to Xj and Yk. It is equal to sum of information content due to the first event. Due to the first event and information content due to the second event that is I of Yk. So I of Xj plus I of Yk. 
for two independent events, but for two independent events, total information content present in the two events. From the last slide, I told you that I of xj comma yk is proportional to 1 by p of xj comma yk. Because the two events are independent, you can write p of xj comma yk as the product of individual event probabilities at a p of xj into p of yk. So split chest the market out in the 1 by p of xj into 1 by p of yk. Okay, so remember these two equations. So what is equation 1? i of xj comma yk is equal to i of xj plus i of yk. What is the second equation? i of xj comma yk is proportional to 1 by p of xj into 1 by p of yk. Now if you observe equation 1 and 2, if you observe the two equations 1 and 2, we can conclude that we can conclude that a function, a function that converts product into addition. Here actually in the proportionality, in the proportionality if you observe, you will have a product. In the proportionality if you observe, it is a product of two functions. That is 1 by P of xj into 1 by P of I, yk. So from equation 2, you have a proportionality factor. Now this function should convert product into addition because i of xj is proportional to 1 by p of xj into 1 by p of yk. That is equation 2. And from equation 1, it is equal to i of xj plus i of yk. So here we can conclude that from equation 1 and 2, we should consider a function that converts product into addition. A product ni mana sum ki the convert chayal. So that function is nothing but the logarithm function. That function is nothing but the logarithm function. Therefore, therefore, I of xj, I of xj comma yk will be how much? I of xj plus I of yk, which is equal to log 1 by, here I have replaced the proportionality factor. This proportionality factor is replaced by the logarithm function. If proportionality thesis is equal to the logarithm function. function. So log of same value that is 1 by p of xj into 1 by p of yk. Because I think you know that log ab, log a into b, you can write it as log a into log, log a plus log b. Log a plus log b. So I of xj, so if you write like this, that is log 1 by p of xj plus log 1 by p of phi k. If you write like that, I of xj will be log 1 by p of xj and I of phi k will be log 1 by p of phi k. So what is the conclusion? So from the first statement, we obtained that there exists inverse proportionality between the, in, the like, the information and its probability. The information of the event, particular event is inversely proportional to its event probability. That is the first statement. From second statement, we obtained that total information is a sum of the information contained due to the individual events. Okay, that is I of xj, yk will be I of xj plus I of yk. But if the two events are independent to each other, P of xj comma yk will be the product total probability will be the product of individual probabilities. So upon so like uh, comparing equation 1 and 2, here a function that converts product into addition is a logarithm function. Just this proportionality is replaced by log. So log of 1 by P of xj into 1 by P of yk. So it is like in the form of log x into log y, which will be log x plus log y. Okay, so log, first factor is log 1 by p of xj plus log 1 by p of yk. Upon equating that, i of xj will be log 1 by p of xj and i of yk will be log 1 by p of yk. So what is the final relationship between uh, the event probability 
and its information the information of a particular event is equal to log 1 by its event probability okay so just we calculated the uh, relationship we have proved the relationship between the information of a particular event with respect to its probability by using two statements of discrete memoryless sorts okay just i have concluded the statement here what is the statement the information content of an event e is denoted in terms of its probability of the event as i of e is equal to log 1 by p of e probability of the event e so here log 1 by a you can write it as log a power minus 1 and if you take that minus 1 power of minus 1 towards outside the logarithm you will get minus log p of e so i of e will be log, log 1 by p of e actually but if you take uh, if you represent 1 by p of e as p of e <coughs> i'm sorry so i of e will be minus log p of e Finally, log 1 by x is represented as minus log x, so minus log p of e. So it's better to remember the uh, second uh, relation, that is, i of e is minus log p of e and Gutmit code. You can only log 1 by p of e. Uh, so just remember i of e as minus log p of e for the event x j, for the event x j, uh, where j has uh, m number of outcomes, 1 to m. With the event probability p of x j as i of x j is equal to log 1 by p of x j, which is equal to minus log p of x j minus log p of x j. Now here you may get a doubt. What is the what are the units of information? Every time we'll discuss that the units of information are bits. Okay, so every time we'll tell that. The units of information are bits. So, how do you call them? Bits, 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 and call just the bits in the form of zeros and ones, bits. So, but here you should remember that the base of the logarithm, the base of the logarithm gives you the unit of information. Here, the base of the logarithm provide you the units of information. Here, whenever the base of logarithm. If the base of the logarithm, so whenever the base of the logarithm is two, if the base of logarithm is two, then the units of information are bits. Then you will have the units as bits. So please, so you can observe this from from this slide. So what are the units of information? Please observe the first point. The units can be bits when the base is two. So, for example, if the base is e, the units are nats, nats. You can see this from the slide. You can see this from this slide. So, units can be bits when the base is two, and units are nats when the base is e, and units can be decits when the base is. So, what are the units of uh, units where the base is e? Units are bits. So that's why we can say that the units of information are bits when its base is two. Now, how can you convert the bits into nats or vice versa? That is from nats to bits, or from bits to decits, or vice versa. That is decits to bits. Okay. And similarly, uh, nats to decits and a decit to nats, vice versa. How can you be able to convert? So, in order to uh, go through the unit conversions, log a base two, log a base two. The general uh, uh, relation is either log a by log two or ln a by ln two. Okay, here you can convert. Uh, please observe the uh, unit conversions. So, you can show it above. Please observe 
the unit conversions. One bit. What is one bit? Let us represent one bit in terms of decits. What is one bit actually? How many times that of decit? Log two base ten decits. Log two base ten decits. Okay, that will be. That will be log. That will be log two by log ten. Log two by log ten. Please, one of you, uh, please check this and whether you got 0.30 decits or not. Please check this. Take your calculator. Please take your calculator and uh, check one bit is equal to 0.301 decits or not. Because the units are bits and the base is 2. And when the base is 10, units are decits. When the base is E, units are nats. Check chain number log 2 by log 10. Check this, Chapandi, how much you got? Check just now, Raleda. I two, I two, Narma. I two I two. Why you are not responding? M0, M0. Ma'am, 0 0.3010. Oh, what's 0.301 decits. Am I your strength is taku na room class M0? Strength is only taku na room 42. I don't know, ma'am. Might be due to exams. Okay, okay. Okay. But TV is also important, right? Mainly, this semester problem I could get a little bit. Choose good. Or else you go through the material which will provide you. Okay. Uh, Ochinda, I think the chemical 0.301 decits. Ochinda, ma. Next check chain di. M0. Mira check chain di. One decit is equal to how many bits? One decit is log 10 base 2 bits. But log 10 by log 2. Osinde. Ma'am, 3.321. Okay, very good, very good. That's right. And similarly, one nat is uh, log e base 2 bits. It is log e by log 2. A check chain is log e by log 2. Ma'am, 1.44269. Uh, very good. Next, one bit is log 2 base e nats. At a log 2 by log e. In this one, check chain.
I, I request That's all no. the other students please cross check uh, the values which I have mentioned here. Me kave values osna hai leda oxa check check kund. Zero point nine three one one. Zero point six nine three one. Okay. Alane one nat is log e base ten decits. That is log e by log ten nidi. This is log e by log ten. Log e by log ten. Zero point four three four two nine nine. Okay, very good. Similarly, you please check for one decit into nats. One decit is log ten base e nats. The log ten by log e. Two point zero two five. Okay, two point three zero two. Okay, okay, ma. Thank you. Thank you, ma. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so finally, we have we we know how to convert uh, from bits to nats or from nats to decits or from bits to decit and vice versa for them. So Allah make us six conversions of sty. And anyhow, uh, every time you remember that the units of information are bits uh, for the whole uh, application, we'll consider the units of information as bits. So that's why if you observe the equation. If you observe the equation, uh, it will be in the form of. So we keep it. If I tell you that uh, the event probability, event probability for the event x j with event probability p of x j, i of x j will be minus log p of x j base two. If I tell you like this, children, doctor, you can base two and mention just an unconde. Then what is its meaning? What can be the units here? Bits. Okay, if I tell you that i of x j is equal to minus log p of x j base two, then the units will be bits. Okay, for example, if I mention here like base ten, a particular unit is entered there, decits are there. Okay, similarly, if I assume that the base as e, then the units will be nats okay like this so whenever the inf so information is equal to minus log p of xj base e if it is base e it will be nats if it is base 10 it will be decits and if it is base 2 it will be bits so man general ga bits ane tisukuntaru kabatti let us assume the base as 2 so ee point matram meer kachithanga gurtu pettukovali endukante Because uh, even while solving the problems, every time uh, the units will be given in the bits only. So we call units bits like zero and take log on the other base ten bit call and card log base two. Please remember this point. Even while solving problems, for example, if the probability of a particular event is given as zero point two, zero point two is zero and code. After log zero point two base two, matter of it is called. I don't consider it as base ten or base e. Okay, so what is the unit for information? Bits. In general, the units are bits. That's why you should consider the base as two only. So, your problems are just that. After what is the information for a particular event uh, having a probability of zero point two? Oxa chapandi. I am asking you. Uh, let us take the probability of as p of x j as some 0.2 because always the total probability should be less than 1 should be equal to 1 so mana oka particular event ki like 0.2 tisukonte meer p of x1 let us take it as 0.2 and what can be the value of information minus log 0.2 base 2 చూడండి మా ఇక్కడ సో లాగ్ సో ఇప్పుడు నేను జీరో పాయింట్ టూ అని చెప్పాను సారీ టూ లాగ్ దట్ ఈస్ మైనస్ జీరో పాయింట్ సిక్స్ నైన్ ఎయిట్ హియర్ యాక్చువల్లీ ఇన్ ద వీ హ్యావ్ నెగిటివ్ సైన్ హియర్ ఓకే 
So divided by log two, catch the gap at call. Divided by, please put in brackets, two log. It will be how much? 0.301. So the information of a particular event having the uh, probability of probability as like a 0.2 will be log 0.2 divided by log 2 per thermal. Log 0.2 divided by log 2. Every time remember that. Otherwise, if you take log 0.2, it will be 0.6. So answer gets wrong. Okay, so we're good to bit calls in the end right? because the units are bits. The base of the logarithm should be 2. Base should be 2. Okay. Uh, so anyhow, we can continue the remaining portion in the next class. So in the today's class, what we discussed? We discussed two statements uh, like the proof of information content i of of a particular event i of e as minus log p of e base 2 bits okay so the proof because to in order to uh, prove that statement we have undergone uh, two distinct uh, levels of statements for discrete memoryless source what is the first statement the information content is inversely proportional to its probability the inverse the information content is inversely proportional to its probability. So I of E is inversely proportional to P of E. Okay, proportional to 1 by P of E. Next entity consider Chesaru. Total information is the sum of all independent outcomes. So the I of X J comma Y K. So we assume two events. X J Y K. For the two events. Uh, we can say that i of xj comma yk is equal to i of xj plus i of yk. And if the two events are independent to each other, p of xj comma yk will be p of xj into p of yk. So using these two relationship, relation, uh, using these two as uh, equation 1 and 2 and equating those two, we can obtain, we can see function that converts product into addition. Product into addition is a logarithm function. Is a logarithm function. Therefore, therefore we finally obtained the information of a particular event as minus log the probability of the event for various outcomes where j ranges from one to m. Okay, and uh, what about the units? Here the units are bits. Here. The units are bits. Whenever the base is 2 and whenever the base is 10, the units are decits. And whenever the base is E, the units are nats. It will be the log 10 bits will be log 2 decits. Okay. So like that we have uh, converted the units. Okay, so anyhow, uh, for all the information theory, we'll consider the uh, units as uh, bits only because the base is 2. So that's why remember the equation i is equal to information content of a particular event i of e is equal to minus log p of e base 2, base 2 and hood pit code. Okay, with this uh, we can stop the class.